Hi, everybody. It's Dr. Young again um, for our weekly Thursday webinars. Um, so before, in the past, uh, I think it's been six weeks now that I've been doing these, the webinars have been actually an hour long, which I think is a big chunk out of your day. So we're going to start today with um, just 30 minute webinars again each week, um, every Thursday from 1 until 1.30 Eastern Standard Time. And feel free to um, email me with any questions or respond when you um, listen to the replay. And of course, anytime that you want to ask a question during today's presentation, um, put it in the chat room. You can also raise your hand if that feature is on um, your screen and um, we can talk live later on. So today is actually going to be Danielle Lam uh, Lambert. She's going to be talking to us about increasing your clinic sales of um, products or services using social media. And she's got a whole presentation lined up for you. It's gonna last about 20 minutes and we'll take your questions afterwards. So with that, I'll turn it over to you, Danielle. Thank you so much for doing that today. All and right. I'm really excited about your presentation too. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Let me turn on my screen share here so we can see my presentation. Pop this up for you guys. Okay, so um, yeah, so today we are talking uh, three simple steps to successful promotions online and in practice, uh, things that we can do to really, um, you know, increase sales on specific products or services. We'll kind of go with like a specific example today. Um, but yeah, kind of taking it from, you know, a really cohesive approach from what you can do in your practice and more specifically what you can do online. So First and foremost, this is me, you saw me for a second there with the uh, Google Hangout, but uh, my name is Danielle Lambert and I am a practice manager at Quinnebog Valley Veterinary Hospital in Danielson, Connecticut. Um, through my work at, at the hospital, you know, we really wanted to kind of get involved in li online a few years ago. So we jumped on Facebook and this is our first Facebook post. I always include this in my presentations because I think it's really not exciting. So um, <laughs> when we started out, it was nothing too, too fancy. Um, but, you know, as we got going, I started sharing more content and I would share content from other sources like goofy videos and things like that. But as I kept going with social media, I really learned that we succeeded when we focused on sharing things from our hospital, not, you know, goofy memes and videos from other sources or articles from other sources, sharing stuff from us. So, you know, I'm going to interrupt you here for a second, Danielle, because um, I cannot see your slides move um, on my screen. It's still stuck on the very first slide that you showed. So okay. Um, I wonder, okay, hold on one second. Let's do, let's do, we've got to love technical difficulties. Let's try. Yeah, so really <laughs> I wonder. And while you're trying to figure that out, I'm going to just ask everybody who's on, if you saw the slides change, if it was just a technical difficulty on my end, or if you were also stuck on the very first slide. So if you could just type that into the message box, that would be really great. Just type in here, stuck on slide or slides moving fine or something like that. It has you pick like a specific thing that you want to share, but I think now I should be screen sharing my entire screen. So I think we should be good now. Because can you see now okay, if I'm yes. shifting mm -hmm. through? All right. So, um, yeah, I was mentioning kind of our boring first post. If you didn't see that, that's what this looked like, our first Facebook post way back in February of 2012. Um, got into kind of, like I said, the goofy videos and stuff. But like I said, we really have started to succeed sharing stuff from within our own practice. And even more so, really, when we try to do educational um, you know, things on our social media we have been able to increase compliance and therefore sales on um, different things that we've focused on over the years. So, you know, I know there's a lot of different social media management services out there for vets, but the thing is, the majority of them are going to post, you know, boring stuff like this that comes from another source. My practice has had just great success with sharing things from 
um, you know, our own content from our website, writing our own blogs, taking our own pictures, doing everything like that in house. We've grown to having over, uh, you know, 2000 likes on our Facebook and we're a pretty small practice. And just an interesting fun fact for you. I looked this up the other day. Since establishing an online presence in 2011, our heartworm prevention sales have actually increased 23%. So I'm going to focus on heartworm prevention as an example for us today. Because uh, also, in addition to managing my practice, I do uh, help other industry um, members with their social media. I manage social media for the Companion Animal Parasite Council. I help Dr. Andy Rourke with his social media. And now you can find me over on snoutschool.com, which is my website where I teach practices to grow using social media. So our plan today is really to go through the three steps that I think it takes to have successful promotions, from creating a social veterinary team to setting goals and to planning out the steps. And then definitely open it up to any questions or discussion that you, uh, you, know, you might have after we go through everything. So the first step to me with any sort of, you know, promotion these days is creating a social veterinary team. Um, you need, you know, really to have a consistent message from Facebook to your front desk if you want to have compliance. People need to be hearing the same thing on Facebook that they're hearing after they check out for their visit. So I really think that having your team involved is totally key. You can't be like a lone wolf on social media. You have to have everybody involved. So if your veterinary hospital is on social media, you need to have a social team. Now to get that social team going, you have to definitely establish some expectations. So if you don't have other members of your practice participating in social media right now, you definitely want to start out by making sure you have a few, you know, fun manager things in place. Um, not, not always the most exciting things to talk about, but they're important. Things like having consent to share photos and videos of your staff on social media and in your marketing materials, make sure you have that. Uh, make sure you have a social media policy in your handbook. And with your social media policy, I would really focus more on having a good discussion of what is and what is not okay to share on social media. Um, you know, I go through social media a lot um, and see veterinary professionals posting things and some of them scare the uh, Jesus out of me. For example, there was a post where a veterinary professional identified this cat and went on a rant about declawing. So you wanna make sure you clarify that stuff like this is not okay to be posting publicly on social media. But then I have an awesome uh, team member, Paula, who shares uh, pictures from our practice that I think are completely harmless. We have consent on on sharing the patient photos and she shares them in a really positive light. So make sure you know you establish with your team that we wanna share things in a really positive light online and kind of get that um, you know message conveyed so that everybody's on the same page. Um, and I think that you know to really make social media work for your practice and work for increasing compliance on any part of um, you know services or products at your practice, you need to really make being social part of your protocol. You know, consider things like who's responsible for taking photos, how do they take them, do you have iPads or a camera, or are they allowed to use their smartphones, things like that. Where do they take them? Like we take our patient photos in the exam rooms. Where do they send them? You know, my team's awesome about sending photos over to one email we have designated for it so we can batch everything out on social. Definitely have some systems in place. And at the end of the day, you do have to kind of explain the value of social media to your team. So not everybody at your practice may be really familiar with social media. So you have to kind of explain the what's in it for me. Um, to me, social media is really about bringing that same communication, education, and connection that we have in pra practice, but bringing it online 365 days a year. You know, we can now kind of really keep that connection going, keep that conversation going throughout the year instead of just in, you know, annual biannual visit. So I think that with your team, if you, you know, explain everything out, set a routine and have accountability, you're going to have a successfully social team. So that for sure is the first place that we want to start. And when you are successful, 
you can have a little social team party there um, and be really proud of yourselves that you've established that kind of culture within your practice. Now, after you have gotten your team on board with social media and gotten all of those systems in place to you know, make social media work within your practice, this is where we can dive in a little bit deeper from you know, posting cute puppy photos and kitten photos on social media is great, but now you can set more solid goals for your practice. So really, you know, discussing what these goals are and, um, you know, setting something that's going to be, um, you know, measurable and realistic is key. So again, you know, measurable, realistic, share it with the whole team and establish a reward. I think it's really key to you know, add a little bit of fun in here and have some sort of reward for your team, even if it's just buying pizza for everybody. You know, setting a goal, measuring the goal. You know, we often will track it. Um, you know, on like a little poster, if we have a goal, we'll track it as as we go through the time period, and we will you know let our staff keep an eye on it because they know they're getting a reward at the end. So you gotta have a goal and make it fun. So for example, here, you know, talking about goals, something specific. You know, we will increase the sale of flea, tick, or heartworm, uh, whatever you're focusing on, whichever products, by, let's say, 15% from last August. Or we will boost compliance from four and a half months to six months on our um, heartworm prevention. Obviously, we'd all want to get to the to a full year, but, you know, most practices are seeing only about two months covered out of the year on things like heartworm preventative. So if you can get that up to six months, that's going to be a huge win for your patients and your practice. So set that goal. Let's kind of maybe roll with the idea of we're going to increase sales of heartworm preventative by 15% from last year um, as our goal for this hypothetical situation. So set that goal. And then you need from there to really plan each promo step out to reach success. There's a lot that kind of goes into promoting something successfully. And you know, like I, I mentioned at the beginning, you know, it goes from, you know, what they see on Facebook to what they see when they come in and are at the front desk. You have a really, um, you know, a really cohesive plan in place, you know, that's going to really make you the most successful. So first and foremost, I think within, you know, this step, there's a couple steps, some, some mini steps in here, right? Um, so you should definitely define what the promo is. So which products or services are included in this? So if we're trying to increase heartworm prevention sales, which products are we focusing on? And, you know, are there any sales or rebates um, related with that? Like, are you going to do some sort of a special sale or does the manufacturer have a rebate that you can use, which a lot of them do right now with things like heartworm prevention? And if there are things like a rebate in place, I highly recommend creating out pricing charts that are going to show potential savings. Um, and you can share those in practice, but they're also great to share online. So define this, define the products, and define you know what that um, advantage is to the client by showing them what they're going to save. Um, this is from a blog post um, that I did for my practice where we broke down uh, the like 12 pack price for um, certain products versus buying one dose and how much they're going to save and what the price is per day. This kind of stuff is super effective when pet owners can see how much they're going to save and how affordable a product can be. So if you are trying to focus on a product or service, doing something like this, I think is great for, uh, you know, a first step so that you really establish what that promo is all about. Now from there, you need to have a cohesive strategy for actually doing the promoting. You know, answer the question, how will you promote? Um, offline, there's obviously things to take into consideration, like what you're going to do in the waiting room and the exam rooms, who's going to say what, you know, really getting that laid out. And then online, you need to, <laughs> there's so much more to even, there's lots of moving parts, right? You have to kind of think about what kinds of Facebook posts that you might want to do, um, Facebook ads, infographics, blog posts. Um, do you have an online store somewhere that they can order the product or request an appointment for the service? All of that kind of stuff, you know, needs to be thought out for sure. And with the heartworm preventative example, I've got a few posts for you to give you some inspiration here. 
this is a um, really big thing that we've done for the last couple of years is on the first of the month we do some sort of post about giving heartworm prevention as kind of like a little bit of a reminder but also to you know make it a little bit fun so that's my little dog archer that's in this video and um <laughs> you can't see in the video but he's running down the hall for that after the heartworm prevention treat so um sharing stuff like this is really fun for clients um in this case we have them comment and we pick a winner out of the comments to get some free doses of heartworm prevention so this kind of post can be a really fun thing on the first of the month. Here's another little video and picture collage of my pup taking his heartworm prevention. But, you know, just kind of asking, you know, your clients to either comment about, you know, if they gave their heartworm prevention today or a picture of their pet getting their heartworm prevention in return for a prize can be a really simple and fun way to get them to engage with you and to also start increasing compliance on a really important thing. Now, another kind of fun educational post that you can apply to heartworm prevention or all sorts of topics is a quiz question. Um, so if you want to really focus on, you know, in this case, heartworm, bringing facts out into the light to clients is a, an important thing to do. But you kind of have to do it in a fun way, right? Nobody goes onto Facebook being like, oh, I really hope I learned something today. So again, we are giving away a prize here and making it fun. And we are just asking owners to fill in the blank here where it says one in blank dogs in Wyndham County, that's our county, test positive for a heartworm. So these kinds of posts are exactly the kind of stuff that you can be sharing. Um, some pointers with the quiz posts Definitely have a prize. Talk to your territory manager um, to if you're going to donate some product for a prize. Set a deadline for when you want people to comment by and answer. Um, usually I give them like a day or two to answer my quiz question. And definitely link to a blog. You can see back here that there's actually a link in that caption to a blog post that's related to Heartworm because we want them to actually go learn more and also learn that we're a good resource for them. So that's a great example for you. Um, another example here, a uh, little infographic uh, on Pinterest, five reasons to beware buying your dog's heartworm preventative online. Things like this are really, really effective. Um, now this lovely gross picture here, make it you never want spaghetti again. Up to 300 heartworm can live in an infected dog. Um, and talking about getting heartworm prevention from a trusted source, really conveying that message that you know, you want them to come to you for this product or service and why. Um, so in the case of heartworm, we want you to come to us because this is a deadly disease and, you know, getting it from other sources could be potentially unsafe. Kind of communicating that is really important. So think about that when promoting any sort of product or service. And at the end of the day, all this stuff is driving back to blogs. If I had one thing that I could really drive home in terms of promoting online, um, it would be blog posts. Having blogs on your website, so within your actual home page, like within your website, not on a separate blog site or something like that, is so important because it's going to drive traffic to your site. And within these blog posts, I link up to where they can refill um, things like heartworm prevention or flea and tick prevention, whatever the article is about. I allow them to then purchase that product. So driving the website uh, traffic to where they're under your control and are able to actually complete that sale is a really, really key part. And plus, you are just reinforcing the idea that you are the source for information online, not Dr. Google. <laughs> so some tips with blogs and infographics, any sort of that educational material. You definitely want to make sure you think like a pet owner. What's important to a pet owner? Not what's important to a veterinary professional. Okay, um, so one of the biggest tips to make sure you're doing that is ask your receptionist, you know, whoever's answering the phone at your practice for the common questions that they get from clients so that you really are making these blogs and infographics about things that pet owners care about, not just veterinary professionals, right? You know, I see veterinary hospitals blog about some stuff that I can hardly muster up interest in. You want to really make sure it's something that pet owners are going to care about. So, you know, from there, once you have the posts that you are going to share um, thought out, 
From there, you want to define the roles of who's going to do what, set expectations for each of your staff members, you know, who's going to order any of the marketing materials that you need in your practice, who's going to write these blogs, who's going to take pictures, um, who's going to make the social media posts and schedule them out, and who's going to track the success. You really, really want to make sure everybody's role is defined. And a little tip for you, um, for the person who's creating the social media posts and scheduling them, I have a free guide for you guys at snoutschool.com slash tools. That is my five must-have social tools for veterinary hospitals. So you can go download that right now at snoutschool.com slash tools so that if it's you or somebody else on your team that's creating those posts, they have the tools to do so especially like the photo editing tools and things like that that are a little trickier. Um, I have great things for you there to make this all actually come into fruition. So from there, you're going to want to make sure, you know, you actually get all of your pieces in place, uh, prep those marketing materials. You know, like I said, hit up your vendors for prizes and promo items, actually write the blog posts, create the graphics, actually, you know, shoot the videos that you're going to share maybe on Facebook, little quick educational videos, schedule out those social media posts, actually put this into action now after you have plotted it all out in your mind. And from there, you wanna definitely make sure you have a conversion strategy. Um, this really is answering the question of how will you actually get pet owners to purchase more, um, in this case, heartworm prevention, right? To me, the most important thing is that you prepare with education because if you know your team is having these conversations online or in practice, they need to be educated in order to discuss these topics with uh, pet owners. I think lunch and learns with any of your reps, they're a great refresher to kind of remind them any products that you're promoting, have a rep from that company come in and do a lunch and learn. Um, in the case of things like heartworm prevention, getting local data from something like capsevet.org. Uh, so the Companion Animal Parasite Council has local data on um, you know, heartworm prevalence in your area. You know, getting that data prepared so that your um, staff understands you know, what the local risk is for pets on that particular, particular issue. Um, Petsandparasites.org is another great resource for learning about parasite-related type topics. But whatever, you know, we're going with the heartworm idea right now, but if whatever topic you are trying to uh, focus on, make sure your team is educated on the related products and any of the related, um, you know, pet health information that they should know about. And from there, you need to make it easy for these people to actually purchase things from you. Granted, when they're in your hospital, that makes it a little bit easy uh, because they're already here. You can hand them the heartworm preventative. Uh, you know, when they're in the room and you talk about it, give them, you know, the year right away and get them good to go. But having a conversion strategy for online is going to be key if you want to start actually seeing social media help boost up sales on a product. So online ordering of some sort is key. If whether or not it is, you know, having an online store that you link to, or even just having a simple form on your site. So let me show you things real quickly here. So first and foremost, if you haven't ever seen the Cap C maps when we're talking about education, the Cap C maps look like this, and you'd be able to learn something like in my county, one in 107 dogs test positive for heartworm. So that kind of information is great to share with pet owners that really resonates with them when they see the local risk. Now, when I'm talking about online ordering, once you've discussed that risk with them and you want them to actually order something, um, I, you, like I said, you can have an online store, but for me, we kind of use our online store for the products we don't carry in-house. For the stuff we carry in-house, we just have this simple form on our website where they can request refills and we ship them out. You've got to make this stuff super, super easy for people or you're not going to get conversion online. Um, it, it, vet hospitals, in my experience, I just see them make it so hard with um, online ordering. You know, They don't even have an option most of the time, and if they do, it's really complicated. Keep it simple. Um, we usually, during promotional times, will do free shipping. Things like that really can incentivize pet owners to seal the deal and make that sale happen. So from there, definitely track within your practice management system and celebrate with your team when you hit your goal. Um, you've got to really, you know, reward everybody because it's such a, you know, cohesive team effort 
that you want to make sure that they feel appreciated for getting involved on this especially when it's something like sales where they know that's generated more income for the practice you've got to kind of redistribute that uh, within uh, the team in my opinion just to kind of keep everybody's morale up so definitely celebrate and if you do something special with your team you know take pictures and share that over on social media and say you know that you for example if you've increased heartworm preventative sales say that you know a hundred dogs that month bought uh, got a year of uh, heartworm preventative so say you know our our team has helped a hundred dogs be safe from heartworm you know and share a, a picture of your team celebrating with that pizza you got them that kind of stuff goes really far in terms of driving community around your posts so quick little kind of run through on ideas of how to promote stuff and I know it's kind of a lot to take in at once if you need to reach out to me this is my contact information. You can find me um, via email is great, danielle at snoutconsulting.com. You can find me on Twitter at Danielle Snout, and that's my handle just about everywhere. You can find me on social media. And again, if you want that free guide, that five must-have social media tools for your veterinary hospital, just go on over to snoutschool.com slash tools. Excellent. I loved it. Thank you, Danielle. <laughs> um, that was great. Um, so I don't see any questions in the chat box and we're getting close to 30 minutes and I do want to keep it short today, but I do have one question. Sure. When you start um, getting into social media in your clinic and you want to explain the value of social media and how it's going to affect um, your, uh, your team, you know, how do you get that buy-in in? 30 seconds or less. No, I'm just <laughs> It is definitely, like I said, it can be hard, especially if your entire team doesn't use social media themselves. I think the, I, I have to convince people every day that social media is important. So the way I really do it is by comparing it to what we do in practice. You know, when we have a new pet owner come in with that puppy for the first time, we're going to talk to them about why heartworm prevention is important. So why would we not share that out on social media? Because those poor pet owners are getting inundated with like 500 kinds of, you know, different topics and information, dental health, nutrition, potty training. So if you can break up all that information and share it out without within the air, I think that is huge. That usually resonates with veterinary teams because I think that you know we all really want to see pet owners more educated because we, we get frustrated when we see miseducation <laughs> lead to um, bad pet care so whatever we can do to educate online that for me really has helped the most when I kind of make that connection for people so just kind of relating it to you know hey in in the practice, it's important for us to have good customer service and communication and be friendly. So it's important online and it's important for us to bring that education on there because that's our responsibility. So we don't see any more crazy people coming in with crazy Dr. Google facts and everything. <laughs> right. Excellent. I love that. Thank you so much, Danielle. And also thank you for the tools. I have not um, obviously checked out your handbook because this is the first time that I've seen your, yeah. your presentation, but I can't wait to go online to get that and it's probably going to explain the one question that I have about creating those posts or those memes or whatever you yeah. want to call them to share on Facebook so that's excellent I just yeah. love that definitely check that out I've got so many photo editing graphic design type tools that I mentioned in that initial guide and then in um, some follow-up emails with more tips and things like that so because I know yeah you don't have to hire a graphic designer or anything I swear it's a lot easier than it looks um, <laughs> so many apps and websites these days that you can use so definitely yeah. check that out <laughs> excellent thank you so much and we're right at 1 30 this was perfect I really appreciate that you are on here I think this is, this is hugely helpful for everybody and um, you know if you want to spread the word about our weekly meetings please do so and I think um, now that they're just 30 minutes instead of an hour long, I think it'll be a lot easier for people to either attend or to have the time to watch the replays. <laughs> yeah, if they're like me and they're at their practice and I locked the door, and yeah. you can only usually lock it for about a half hour before people are going to bang it down. So <laughs> Exactly. And then also, you know, if we want to just reach out to people and have them become members of the LinkedIn group Beyond Veterinary Practice Management, then um, soon, as soon as we have, you know, 150 or so members 
I'm trying to go, uh, create some subgroups so that we can have more individualized um, designed meetings. So I it's love, all, all work in progress. So <laughs> thank you very much, Danielle. And um, yeah, hopefully people will reach out to you. And if not, hopefully I'll see you on LinkedIn in the Beyond Veterinary Practice Management Group. Perfect. Thank you.